never wondered how a potato famine devastated Ireland's population. Welcome to Open Tierra. Today we're diving into the captivating story of Ireland, a land steeped in rich history and diverse culture. Stick around as we uncover the important parts that made Ireland the way it is today. Ireland is an island nation located off the northwestern coast of continental Europe with a total area of 84,421 square kilometers. It is the third largest island in Europe and the 20th largest island in the world. Ireland is divided into two main political entities. The Republic of Ireland, which covers about five-sixths of the island, and Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom. The island is surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean and separates the Celtic Sea from the Irish Sea. The geography of Ireland is dominated by low-lying mountains surrounding the central lowlands. There are several groups of mountains located along the coast, with the highest peaks reaching over 1,000 meters in elevation. The interior of Ireland consists largely of rolling hills and plains. Ireland has over 7,400 kilometers of winding coastline marked with rugged cliffs, beaches, and hundreds of islands and inlets. Major bodies of water include the River Shannon, the longest river in Ireland at 360 kilometers, as well as inland lakes such as Lauf Nei and Lauf Corrib. The first major influence came with the arrival of the Celts around 500 BC, who brought with them the Gaelic language and culture. Irish society was organized around clans and governed by a set of laws known as the Brehon Laws. In the 5th century AD, Christianity arrived in Ireland, attributed to the missionary work of St. Patrick. Monasteries soon became important centers of religion and learning. This flowering of culture and faith continued until the late 8th century, when Viking raiders began attacking and pillaging Irish monasteries and towns. The Vikings eventually established permanent settlements, including the city of Dublin. In 1002, Brian Baru became High King of Ireland and successfully drove the Vikings out. The late 12th century brought another wave of foreign invasion, the Anglo-Norman invasion from England. This marked the beginning of increased English dominance over Ireland. English control expanded dramatically in the 16th century under the rule of Henry VIII. During this time, waves of Scottish and English settlers came to Ireland in what was known as the Plantations of Ireland. The plantations referred to the organized confiscation of land from the Gaelic Irish nobles and clans and the colonization of this land with settlers from England and Scotland. The goals of the plantations were to establish control over Ireland, stop a rebellion and punish the rebellious nobles by taking their lands. There were many turbulent episodes of struggle and rebellion against English control over the centuries. A major uprising came in 1798, followed by the Great Famine of 1845 to 1852, which led to mass starvation and emigration. The potato blight first appeared in 1845 and continued ruining crops for several years, leading to widespread famine and disease. By 1847, nearly a quarter of Ireland's population relied completely on government relief to survive. The British government's response was inadequate, offering little aid while continuing to export food from Ireland. Mass evictions by landlords further worsened the suffering and death toll. It's estimated that one million people died during the Great Famine, while another million were forced to emigrate. The Great Famine and British mismanagement led to deep resentment and increased Irish nationalist sentiment. The mass immigration depleted Ireland's population permanently. The famine disproportionately impacted the poor and rural communities who relied on potatoes as their only food source. 
Around the turn of the 20th century, the Home Rule movement gained momentum calling for Irish autonomy from England. In 1916, the Easter Rising set off Ireland's war for independence, resulting in the Anglo-Irish Treaty in 1921, which established the Irish Free State. However, the island was partitioned, with Northern Ireland remaining under British rule and part of the United Kingdom. The Republic of Ireland formally declared itself in 1949. The late 20th century saw prolonged violence and unrest during the period known as the Troubles in Northern Ireland. But starting in the 1990s, it underwent an economic transformation known as the Celtic Tiger, joining the EU and emerging as a modern, affluent nation. The island of Ireland is home to an estimated 7 million people, with 5 million residing in the Republic of Ireland and the rest in Northern Ireland. The population consists predominantly of two ethnic groups, the native Irish and the Ulster Scots. The Irish are descendants of the Celts and are closely related to the Scots and Welsh. Irish Gaelic is the traditional language of the Irish people, though English is more commonly spoken today. The Ulster Scots trace their ancestry to Lowland Scots, who settled here in the 17th century. They are mostly concentrated in Northern Ireland. Religion has played a major role in Ireland's history and sectarian divisions. Most Irish are Roman Catholic, while the Ulster Scots are predominantly Protestant. Religious affiliation was a key factor in the conflicts in Northern Ireland. Irish Gaelic is a Celtic language closely related to Scottish Gaelic. It is constitutionally recognised as the first official language of Ireland and is still spoken in parts of the country today, especially in the Gaeltacht regions. However, English is the most commonly used language throughout most of Ireland, Ibano English refers to the local variety of English spoken in Ireland, which has some unique words, pronunciations and grammar. Ireland is renowned for its rich cultural heritage that has been shaped by centuries of history. Irish culture is a compelling mix of ancient traditions and contemporary influences that can be seen in its lively festivals, music, dance and literature. Irish mythology and folklore have endured through the ages, chronicling tales of ancient warriors, fairies and leprechauns. Stories of mythic figures like Cúchulín and Queen Medb continue to captivate audiences today. Music is integral to Irish culture, from traditional Celtic instruments like the fiddle and William pipes, to popular rock and punk bands like U2 and the Cranberries. Ireland has a vibrant scene of traditional pubs where live music prevails. Irish dance has experienced a global renaissance thanks to the popular theatrical production River Dance. Irish step dancing is known for its rapid leg movements, while set dancing involves synchronized group formations. In literature, Ireland has produced four Nobel Prize laureates, including poets W.B. Yeats and Seamus Heaney, and playwrights George Bernard Shaw and Samuel Beckett. Box tea, a classic Irish potato pancake made from a batter of mashed potatoes, baking soda and flour, then fried on a griddle. Box tea can be served as a savoury bread or topped with meat stew. Shepherd's pie, ground lamb and vegetables like carrots, peas and onions baked under a layer of mashed potatoes. The pie is hearty, simple fare. Colcannon, a dish of mashed potatoes with kale or cabbage and onions mixed in, often includes milk and butter to enrich it. Soda bread, a signature. Irish quick bread leavened with baking soda instead of yeast. It is crusty on the outside and soft inside. Sports play a prominent role in Irish culture and society. Gaelic games like hurling, Gaelic football, 
camogie and handball are deeply woven into the fabric of Irish life. These sports are organized and governed by the Gaelic Athletic Association, established in 1884 to promote Irish sports. Other popular sports in Ireland include soccer, rugby union, horse racing, boxing, golf and cycling. Soccer is the most widely played team sport, while rugby enjoys a passionate following, especially for the Irish international team. Ireland has a strong sporting history, with stars like boxer Barry McGuigan, golfer Padraig Harrington, soccer player Roy Keane and athlete Sonia O'Sullivan achieving international fame. More recently, Conor McGregor has popularised mixed martial arts. Sports rivalries, particularly in Gaelic games, create an atmosphere of lively fandom. Supporters sport their county or club colours, Pubs are filled with sports chatter. Regardless of the sport, the passion and pride of Irish fans is palpable. If you enjoyed this video on Ireland, you'll love this next one.